Guys, today we have a special guest, Nokia 5.3. It arrived with a pretty good set of specs, pure Android and even a reasonable price. And if you enjoyed the shortest ever review on this device, then hit the like button so I would know that you prefer such one. And if you came here for details, you might not like everything you'll hear today. And I'm speaking not about my voice. So, welcome to Techfellas, my name is Bogdan, and let's tech into it. The first goes the outer look. On the outside there are no ceramics, aluminum, crocodile skin, diamond plating or sapphire crystal in the body. Well, I can assume that particles of diamond dust in the air once landed on its body, but unfortunately the main build material here is a composite. So what is it? Let me be a Wikipedia. In case of the smartphone, composite is basically a well-known plastic, but specifically an alloy of several types of polymer materials with different hardness, scratch or temperature change resistance. Ok, now close to the feelings. It looks fine and doesn't slide in hands. Our phone is grey, but you can also find more cheerful cyan and sand options. What else can I say? Along the screen there is a frame and it's quite noticeable. Gladly that at front they set at least a dew dot notch instead of a big regular one. From what you can find inside without cracking the body is a card drawer that is made in the very best way. Here you can put additional storage inside and two SIM cards simultaneously. And even more important thing, there are both a mini jack and type C ports that appear together less and less in modern smartphones. Face unlock together with old school back side fingerprint reader are also here. Both of these recognition methods work quite adequately. Just it is a pity that overall speed of each of the sensors is far behind from what we've been expected. And before getting into the screen, I must say the device has NFC, which is definitely a good news. So the screen is 6.55 inch IPS panel with HD plus resolution. As for the pixel density, I'd say that everything is decent, but with one exception that only the eyes of the most mature gamer may notice. In some games the models tend to be poorly drawn. It is sometimes really noticeable that game image resolution doesn't match the one offered by the screen. But this is not in all games, and frankly the person who can spot such flaws is the one who has repeatedly used smartphones with QHD displays. Otherwise the screen is not bad, the brightness level is extremely acceptable, sensitivity is quite adequate and we have no complaints about the colors. For instance, I see no problems in watching a movie on this device, especially when the size fits perfectly for that. Playing games is also something that will be pleasing with the screen. 6.5 inches will prevent you from blocking all the gameplay with your fingers and only move around the edge, getting a complete joy from the game. By the way, it's time to mention the hardware. The heart of the device is Qualcomm Snapdragon 655 chip. Graphics is Adreno 610. As for the storage, in our sample it is 64 gigs and 4 gigs of RAM. Will you ask me whether all that work fast? Frankly, you shouldn't, cause with such screen resolution the games don't seem to put much pressure on this hardware. And so most of the modern games here run superbly fast on the medium high graphics. Here is a bunch of screenshots of the performance test for you. Tell me how do you admire this benchmark test in comments? And get ready for something surprising. I'd like to start saying that nowadays gaming and communication question go in pair, specifically with Wi-Fi. This in my humble opinion is very important since today every successful mobile game is an online one. Long story short, Wi-Fi connection in games here is not good, at least in our sample. Ping in World of Tanks Blitz was jumping over the top and seemingly dropping a blizzard of losses. Problem wasn't solved by restarting the game or the whole phone. So we came up with next. Ethernet. USB adapter, Type-C adapter, Nokia 5.3. And it helped, but such Frankenstein doesn't make it a portable mobile gaming. 
As for the rest, we have no complaints regarding communication. Bluetooth works fine. For example, in YouTube, Wi-Fi is amazing, and the mobile internet connection is solid, as well as signal receiving for calls and adequate quality of the voice on the other side of the line. Now quickly the battery life. It is 4000 mAh here that always was enough for me to use the phone all day. If you be more or less restrained in the consumption of angry pixies, the battery life will easily give you two days. The sound through headphones is not particularly noticeable by some special flavor. It is neither bad nor good, let's call it even. After all, everyone will be able to adjust the sound to their own needs using the equalizer. Multimedia speaker in the smartphone is one and lonely. It is of course on the bottom. The front facing one doesn't sing alone with it, but the volume is really decent. As for the melody quality, it is on average. There is no wheezing and rattling. but I honestly wouldn't stick to listening this singing a lot. But would I stick to shooting from its cameras? There are a lot of them in Nokia 5.3, and I'll start with the front cam. It is not bad at all in total here. Gods and goddesses of selfies should definitely be satisfied. I would just add that the sharpness on photos could be a bit higher. The main camera unit is also pleasing, but a pity that only in terms of capabilities of the main lens. An ultra-wide angle is sometimes able to create a good shot, but it takes a long time to suffer in order to do so. Overall, photos from each unit sometimes are different in exposure and even in white balance. If we are talking about the main wide-angle camera all alone, then everything is quite good. The outcoming pics have acceptable sharpness and excellent colors without jumping into acid tones. I especially give my wows to the close-ups that this module can do. Now, videos. The maximum resolution you can take clips on is 4K. We've noticed that the exposure here really loves to hit some random areas. But that's only the half of all the problems. What's the most letting me down is the lack of stabilization on the videos. Summarizing the stuff, Nokia 5.3 is unfortunately not a unique phenomenon on the market, cause even in its price range there is a high competition. Nevertheless, the smartphone made me have a lot of positive emotions. It has nice body, a decent battery, and a large screen that is not the last in my and I hope many other people's needs. The hardware is not disappointing. Don't forget about the triple card drawer and that a Type-C port lives together with the mini jack. It's funny to mention far away in conclusions, but the firmware here is a pure Android that manufacturer promises to keep updating for two years. Other stuff I'm sure can be easily pumped up, like cameras past processing for instance, and the mentioned problem with Wi-Fi that although I hope was a special case in our sample. So, and this is it for today. In the description box below you will find the links to the internet stores where you can buy Nokia 5.3. And if you like this video, then why not to support our channel by subscribing to it, hitting the like button and ringing the bell to stay tuned for more cool content. My thanks for watching and cheers!